The congregation of Emmanuel Ministry Church welcomes you to I Am Alive with Pastor Philip Trent, minister of the gospel for more than 25 years. Now get your Bible and a notebook and let's join Pastor Trent as he preaches the uncompromised Word of God. Hallelujah. Welcome back to Emmanuel Ministry Church. I am alive. Uh, my name is Philip Trent. I pastor Emmanuel Ministry Church over in uh, Hart County, Kentucky. We're located about seven miles east of Horse Cave. And uh, we have services, uh, Sunday school program, great Sunday school program, uh, Brother Phil. We have some tremendous teachers. Uh, a lot of our teachers are, uh, you might say, Rama grads. Right. They've, uh, they've either went to the school or they've done the correspondence school. And, and uh, if you've ever heard of Rama Bible Training Center, uh, the tremendous uh, uh, wealth of information and knowledge that flows through that school. And it goes back to Kenneth E. Hagen uh, and the, the vision that he had for that school. And now that school has over, I forget, 200 and almost 300 schools around the campuses, world. Yeah. Campuses, yeah. They, they really uh, expanded all over the world all to over the teach world. in other languages. You know, one of the uh, not, not anything against missions trips, no, people no, no, taking no, no, missions no. trips and no. things. But when you can put what you call feet on the ground mm -hmm. and you have a Bible school that's there teaching in their language, right. in their home country mm -hmm. on a consistent basis, and you teach those people things of the ministry and they become pastors in their own land, right. uh, it's very effective ministry, right. maybe a, a little different ministry than those that, of us that might go in for a week or two and travel and, and do a missions trip. A lot of times those missions trips, to be honest, if you take a group of people, say, to a foreign country mm -hmm. and, and you minister for a week, they're as much for that group of people as they are for the people they're ministering right. to, mm -hmm. to get you away from uh, you know, the things of the United States mm -hmm. and, and what we see to get you some experience in the international front and see how other people, other Christians live. But when uh, Rama has decided that they're going to have these Bible schools in other nations, yeah. what they're doing is they're teaching locals to minister to local families. And it's been very, very efficient effective. and very effective. And I believe that's what God called us to do exactly. because He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He, so if we're going to go that. into all the world, then what we need to do is teach the people all over the world yeah. of how to minister to their own folks. You know, different people hear from different people. Right. There are some people that you will minister to that dad and I will never have the opportunity right. to talk to. Exactly right. So that's one of the reasons we always encourage you to go out and, and be a witness in your community, whoever mm -hmm. you talk to. Be a witness to the people that uh, you are around because a plumber talks plumbing talk. He might be able to use some things to another plumber and, and be able to talk some lingo that I wouldn't know how to talk. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a rocket scientist is going to hear things different than the way I hear things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you a great example of that. One day uh, my son was talking to some of his friends at his high school. And one of his buddies said, well, what are you going to do this afternoon? He said, uh, oh, well, me and my dad are, are going fencing. And the guy said, that's so cool. And Phil looked at him kind of strange. He said, I, I think that's great. He said, do you have all that equipment, the sword and the, the thing that beeps and all that? Well, in his mind, fencing was the Olympic sport, fencing, sword fighting. Phil was talking about he was coming home and he and I were going to dig post holes and stretch wire to keep livestock in. Mm -hmm. Phil wasn't nearly as excited about fencing <laughs> as this other guy was. Why? Fencing, same word, heard two different ways. Right. Maybe you talk to a whole group of people mm -hmm. that I'll never get to talk to. And even if I did talk to them, mm -hmm. they wouldn't necessarily hear me because they don't understand what I do or they don't understand the way I was brought up, but they'll understand you. So if I can teach you, if we can sp share the gospel with you, maybe you can witness to someone and, and they will hear the gospel from you. And man, God has anointed you to do this. God has prepared you to do this. You're watching television right now. You're watching the Bible. You're, you're listening to the Bible, watching us teach the Bible mm -hmm. because you want to know. Let me tell you, folks, God's preparing you to be a witness. And we ask you, we sincerely, Dad and I sincerely ask, would you please tell someone about Jesus? Amen. Would you please? 
Just tell them what part you know. Well, I, I don't know enough to do, listen. Start somewhere. Start somewhere and go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Read that. Mm -hmm. Know what that says. And if you get in a situation, you say, well, I presented that and they still have questions. Great. Emmanuel Ministry Church is in the phone book. Mm -hmm. You can Google it. Uh, Faith is the Victory Church in Nashville. Mm -hmm. We have a website, fitvc.com. Mm -hmm. All right, go there. I got an email on there. Email me the question. If I don't know, I'll find somebody that does know, and we'll help you lead people to the Lord. Find your local church, too. Yes. Get involved in your local church and ask the pastor what you might do. If there's resources available, uh, to help you along the line. Uh, and there are wonderful resources yes. today, no doubt. The Rhema Bible Training Center is so special to us. Both of us graduated there. It is. But we got to sit under Brother Hagin's ministry. And you say, well, who, who's that? That was one individual man that God called uh, to start a Bible school. And because of his obedience to form that Bible school, he and his son and, 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 and daughter-in-law, they have put thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Christian men and women around the world yes. talking about Jesus and telling about Jesus. Now, Jesus said he was crying. He was weeping over because the people were like sheep without a shepherd. We need a shepherd today. Yes, we do. And that's why the Rhema Bible Training Center, it's, it's, it's harder than just going to have a crusade because you got to go start a Bible school to train people to learn what we're learning so they can save their families, so they can save their communities. Now the church is being built. I'm telling you, there's momentum all around the world. Millions of people are coming to Christ. Yes. And you won't see that on the media. You won't see that on this, on this junk television. But I'm telling you, millions of people are coming to Christ, and it's working. And not only there, but there's great things happening in America. Yes. Tremendous things. I heard the 37, other day. 37,000 yeah. teenagers, two weeks before school started, were in St. Louis at a Bible conference worshiping God. Mm -hmm. They filled up the old Ram Stadium. That you didn't see that on the main media. You news, did not see that on the media. I said filled it up. They had 37,000 in there. I don't mm -hmm. know what it seats. I think yeah. it seats about 70. But 37,000 young people. These were kids, yeah. and they were worshiping God. Instead of being at the beach before school started, right. they went and worshiped God. But that did not make the news, no. but other things did. So there's, there's lots of things happening in right. the body of Christ that are great. They're really good things. Right. And, and so when you support your local church, and uh, the Lord uh, allows this pastor to help support other things, like we help underwrite the cost of Rama. The thousands of people of us that's been to school give so much a month to help. We're not demanded to do that. But in the long run, our money is reaching the world. Yes. It's going around the world, and I'm thankful for that. And if you're in mission program, I, I praise God for you. We need to keep supporting missions around the world and right. doing missions. But uh, we, we've Thank been talking about uh, being led by the Holy Spirit and how to fight the good fight of faith, how to resist the devil, and, and down to the very end infants, uh, the very seed of that is the thought life. Yes. The thought life. If that's, that, you can win that war at the very beginning by controlling your thoughts. Jesus was a master of that, even though the Lord led him into temptation, but I believe he did that so me and you could learn how to overcome those tests, trials, and temptation. Jesus took everything upon himself. He was a he was an individual that God brought here to the earth uh, to show us how to have victory. Yes. We should have victory in Jesus, our Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Amen. He Amen. loved me before I knew him, and now all my love is due him. Amen. And so I don't know what, how you feel about that, but that's the way I feel about Jesus. I could never purchase my salvation. I, I, I know that. But because of what Jesus has done for me, I want to dedicate my life to serve him all the days of my life and to be about the business of telling others about Jesus. You can do that. What if you win one yes. to the Lord in your lifetime and somebody is in God's eternal bliss of heaven instead of burning in the lake of fire throughout eternity. Hallelujah. What about your children? Is the things you're doing and, and leaving off the things you should do, 
Are you so busy and so into hunting and, and fighting and doing all this stuff and uh, doing what you love to do that you're going to let your children go through life not knowing about Jesus Christ? I want to tell you about Lot. Lot who pitched his tent towards Sodom and he got so involved in Sodom and Sodom got in him. And, but when it was all said and done, he was a righteous man. He was spared. But all of those hands, all of those family members, except his two daughters, they were burnt up in the flames of Sodom and Gomorrah. Listen, God, God don't want your children to die. He don't want your children to be led by the devil and get all uh, into drugs and addictions and habits and be a statistic. You, you can... As, as God gave Noah a recipe for his family to the save his family, God will give you, young man, a recipe to save your family. Absolutely. All right. Let's Hallelujah. do whatever you want to do. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, we just thank you today for your word. Your mm -hmm. word is truth. And as we've been sharing for the last few weeks about yes. thoughts, we thank you, Lord, for revelation, knowledge, and helping us to speak things that will bring life to those that are watching. And, Father, we thank you that your word is truth. And that that truth overcomes. Yes. Because that truth is life. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, we've been talking about thoughts. I went to a person one time, Phil. And okay. I think somebody's watching. I want to encourage you. I went to a young man who had been in, in addictions. He'd been in big time drug addictions. And he had a beautiful wife and a couple of children. And he'd started coming to church and he'd gotten free about six or eight weeks. He was just doing good and bubbling. And he told me, he said, I'm ready now. And I said, ready for what? He said, I'm ready to go back and win those drug dealers and all those to Christ. Mm. I said, now, uh, I'm not so sure about that. I said, you need to be very cautious and make sure I, I would not go at all to do that right. unless the Lord led me. Right. Because I don't think you're that strong. I believe you stay away from it. Long short of it, wasn't long till he was back in drugs. Spirit of God spoke to me. I stayed up all night long praying for this family. And the Lord sent me to his trailer. And he sent me with a message. And that message was this. You got a decision to make. You either get out of that mess and you come back to God, or you're going to lose your wife, you're going to lose your children, and probably your life. Well, when it was all said and done, he didn't come out of it. His wife, they divorced. His children are as goofed up, messed up as he is because he made a decision. Let me tell you something. Life and death is in the power of a choice. You better choose to serve God and save yourself and save your family. I beg of you in the name of Jesus to do that. Amen. Well, it all starts with thoughts. Yes. You've got to think. And, and we have to think about ourselves the way God thinks about us. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that in just a moment. How does God think about you? Well, the Bible tells us that we've been seated together with Christ. Hallelujah. So if I'm seated together with Christ, that means that my, first off, I belong to heaven. Mm -hmm. My citizenship is heaven. Mm -hmm. And my position is I'm seated together with him. I'm in a position of victory. Mm -hmm. Now, if I never think of myself as being in Christ, therefore, you know, uh, what is 2 Corinthians 5, 17, mm -hmm. therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old mm -hmm. things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. If I don't think of myself mm -hmm. as being in Christ, I will never act like I'm in Christ. I will never have the benefits of being in Christ. I might be born again, but until I renew my mind with the Word of God and understand how God thinks about me and how He wants me to think, then I will never live in the victory that I'm supposed to live in. Right. We've, we've quoted scripture after scripture to you the last few weeks. We started with the woman of the, with the issue of blood and how she said within herself. Mm -hmm. We talked about David and how he got off in his thinking. And next thing you know, he's with Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. We talked about Peter walking on water. He literally walked upon the water. But then he noticed the wind and he started looking at, at the wind and the sea and all the things around him and he began to sink. Wow. He started sinking because his thought pattern got off of what Jesus said. What did Jesus say? He said, come, walk on the water. 
He said, if it's you, let me walk on the water. Jesus said, come. That was his thought when he stepped out of the boat. But his thoughts changed to the circumstances around it. That's right. We have to be careful that we always keep our thoughts on what the Word of God said and never allow our thoughts to get on the circumstances and the things around us. One of the things we've brought up a number of times is that we have to be careful what we're feeding ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are we listening to? What are we watching? And, and we know we beat that drum quite a bit, <laughs> but if you're listening to music, if you're watching shows, if oh, you're doing boy. things that are putting in you doubt and unbelief, and negativity, and all the things that are against God's Word. Evil if you're words. listening to music that promotes promiscuity, it promotes a worldly lifestyle. Well, it's just words. Now wait, 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 wait. If it's just words, why do you talk on the phone? I thought that your words meant something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the songs, they're just words. Then why can you repeat them? Mm -hmm. Why did Jesus say, that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks if it's just words. Why did Jesus say, Whosoever shall say into this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, Mark eleven twenty three, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith, if it's just words. Mm -hmm. Why in the world would we send an email to somebody if it's just words? Because we're communicating with those words. It's not just words. Mm -hmm. It's communication. Mm -hmm. And it communicates a lifestyle to mm -hmm. us that's not necessarily of God. So we're working on, and what we've been talking about is controlling our thoughts and showing how the woman with the issue of blood used her thoughts to go and receive from God, how that David used his thoughts to get away from the things of God, how that Peter thought, hey, I want to walk on water, and Jesus allowed him to, and then allowed his thoughts to drag him away from the miraculous thing that God allowed him to do, that right. Jesus Why bid did him to you do. Think, he, said. he was in the th right thought pattern, walked correctly, but then walked away. So we, th we saw one that was incorrect because she was, had the issue of blood, and she was healed by thinking and acting upon the Word of God or upon faith in Jesus. We saw one that was thinking correctly and then got off, David and Bathsheba. And when we saw one that thought correctly and got off in the same moment of time, and next thing you know, he's sinking. So it's very important what we allow to feed ourselves. Peter allowed the circumstances around him to feed what he was thinking. If you look in the book of Psalm, very familiar scripture, Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1, it said, Blessed is the man. I like that part right there. I just, Love we just stop right there. You know, God wants us blessed. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Right. Well, what is counsel? That means what someone is telling you, words. what they're feeding you, their words. So if you're walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, that means that you're not allowing ungodly people to feed into right. your belief system. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by belief system? The things that you believe, the things that you think upon, the things that you allow to go run around in your mind, the ungodly will try to feed that. Ungodly can come from all these different sources that we talked about. And I've had someone say to me one time, said, well, yeah, I, I know that, that the words of their songs are not good, but they say they're a Christian. Well, you could stand in your garage and call yourself a car, but you're not. Yeah. Just because a person says they're a Christian, Jesus said this. He said, you'll know a tree by its fruit. Mm -hmm. If it's a good tree, it's going to produce good fruit. And if it's not, it's not going to produce good fruit. So mm -hmm. what kind of fruit are they producing? You have to look and say, I have to choose whether a person is godly or ungodly, not because they tell me but because they show me by their actions. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor stands in the way of sinners or hangs out with mm -hmm. sinners. Stands in the way with, hangs out with. He doesn't spend a bunch of time with sinners. Now, Dad told a, a, a young man that got things right with God, and then he went back and hung out with the sinners, and the sinners got back into him. him. Yep. Right? So you don't want that in your life. He says, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Right. 
Well, what's happening here? You see that the council is wrong, the people they're hanging out with is wrong, and next thing you know, they're starting to talk wrong. They're scorning. They're talking against the things of God. He says, but. Now, but is a conjunction. A conjunction joins the thoughts that were before with the thoughts that are about to come. So the thoughts that were before don't hang out with the ungodly, don't hang out uh, with the, uh, in the way of sinners or mm-hmm. sit in the seat of scornful, but I'm going to tell you what to do. Right. All right? This is what not to do. Now, sometimes we tell people what not to do, mm-hmm. and that's as far as we get it. Don't sin. And that, okay, I agree <laughs> with that, but how do you not sin? <laughs> well, you have to put some things in place mm-hmm. in your life to keep yourself from being tempted and falling into sin. So if I just tell you don't sin, well, that may help you and it may not. Let me tell you what he said. He said, but his delight. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are delighted in something, well, I'm delighted to see you. Well, that was a delightful experience. What Mm -hmm. does that mean? That means you're happy about it. His delight, his excitement comes. What is does excitement come? His delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Think about it. Now think about that for just a minute. In his law, he ponders, his thoughts are day and night. Now I'm going Mm -hmm. to do a test. Dad, Mm -hmm. I I know that you've said before that that, that you're not the most uh, brilliant person that's ever walked, but you're close. I probably lied about that. You're close, (laughs) just close. But but I want to give you a test (laughs) here. No, I'm not. All right. He says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in his law... Does he meditate day and, and night? night. Mm-hmm. What comes after day? Night. What comes after night? Day. Boy, you got 100%. I'm right. And what comes after day? Night. And what comes after night? Day. What comes after day? Night. What comes after night? Day. 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 Mm-hmm. That's all the time. What? Doth he meditate day and night? <laughs> He didn't give you a pause. Did I get an A? You got an A. You, you finally got an A. Mom <laughs> is so proud right Woo! now. My, my, oh. Hi, Mom. You are so excited. Pop got an A. <laughs> day and night. So what comes after day? Night. What comes after night? Day. So what is he telling you to do? And in his law or in the Word, Word of, of God, God. Amen. does he think all the time? Mm-hmm. Joshua 1, eight. This book of the law will not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate therein. Day and night. Why? Let's look at that. It says, For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. I'll just quote it. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Prosperity didn't come, and good success didn't come until you meditated day and night. Right. Now watch this. I'm going to throw something out here that Mm -hmm. I want to make sure you see. Then thou shalt make thy way. Then. Then when? Then after you've meditated on the Word day and night, after you've got your thoughts lined up mm-hmm. with the Word, you've been thinking the Word, same as what it says here, mm-hmm. and he shall, uh, what is it? He said, delight himself in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Day and night. Now in Joshua 1.8, it says, meditate day and night, then thou shalt. Do you got it right there, Pop? Mm-hmm. Yep. Read, read that word, make sure I've got it, word for word. Uh, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So Until doing the will of comes. God, he said, what did he say? He said that you may observe to observe do all to that do. is written. Be obedient. So how did you get to the point where you did the will of God? Because that's what we ask. You kept the word before you day and night. You night kept and day. the word before you day and night. You thought on it night and day. After day comes night. After night comes day. You continually meditated the word. Then what did you do? You were obedient to that word. Mm-hmm. You allowed that word to take place in your life, and you were obedient to the word. And after you were obedient, it says you observed To do. To do. Right? Mm -hmm. After you meditated on it, you think about the Word of God, all of a sudden, you know what you're going to find yourself doing? You're going to be doing the Word of God. You're going to observe to do. It wasn't some big thing that was so hard. It was just the fact that you began to think on the things of God and meditate on the things of God. And then all of a sudden, you'll notice, I hadn't said a cuss word in two weeks. Praise God. 
-hmm. What a great thing. Well, I hadn't got angry and, and, and spouted off. When I got angry, I was able to walk away. Wow, you know, I've been walking in love for all the, wow, this is observing to do. Mm -hmm. Now, you thought about it, you observing to do it, then thou shall make thy way prosperous. Hallelujah. You are making your way prosperous. By the Spirit it didn't of God. say that God was going to come down and make all this happen for you. Mm -hmm. It said that because you're meditating in His Word and you're doing His Word, now He is leading you and you're doing things that are being successful. Why? Because the things that you're doing are godly things. Mm -hmm. The things that you're doing are things that the Lord wants you to do. The things that you're doing are lining up with the Word. How did you make your way successful? By lining your thoughts up with the Word and thinking day and night, meditating the Word all the time muttering it. When you talk about meditating it, it's kind of like muttering it around in your mind. Well, when we started this series about four, five, six weeks ago, the third week we said, taking every thought captive to the mm -hmm. obedience of Christ. What is that? Observing to do. Right. You're observing to do. That scripture in Corinthians just lines us up with what was in the Old Testament in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 and in Psalms. And watch what it says about you. This is, mm -hmm. this is you. You want to know you in the Bible? Here mm -hmm. you are. Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Why aren't you walking in the counsel of the ungodly? Because you're meditating the Word. Nor stands in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of the scornful, but your delight. Why are you delighting? Because you're thinking about Christ. Your delight is in the law of the Lord, and in His law or in His Word doth He meditate day and night. What happens? And He, that's you, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. Oh, thank God. And whatever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. That's you. And it started with your thoughts. I want to say to you as I turn this back to Dad, thank you for listening to us concerning mm -hmm. your thoughts. We're, we're wanting to help you here. And if you'll think on God's Word and continually allow His Word to be in your mind, you're going to be prosperous. And when that starts to happen in your life, would you send us a note so that we could give testimony to Amen. it so that someone else would be blessed, so that someone else would say, hey, this is working, and, and that they would maybe work it in their lives. And Amen. we've got people that can share their testimony with yes. you that how it has worked for them. You know, these things are predetermined. It's predestined if you'll do obedient. It's predestined where you're going. I believe in predestination. Predestin is, predestination is God has predetermined beforehand. If you'll honor Him and obey Him and do what He says, you can have what He says you have. The other day we got on an airplane It's predestined to go to Las Vegas. That's right. All we had to do is just get in there and sit down. It was predestined. And I didn't did. have to worry, look out the window, are they going the right way? No, it was predetermined. It was going to get there. So God's had predetermined, yet you will wind up at the destination He's promised you if you'll live and obey and follow His directions. I hope you do that. If we can help you in any way to do it, that's what we want to do. Thanks for watching. God bless you.